That today in a shop, I picked the project that I've been waiting to do for some time now. I wanted to refresh the paint on this set of older mirrors that were on the FZR, and I wanted to put them as a mirror swap onto the MT-09. And by getting it buffed out today and showing how to get three or four year old paint to shine like brand new or even better than new, it, it turned out to be a good project for today. Uh, during this period of inclement weather, well, we really can't paint anything, and it's been terrible the last couple days. One of the things I really wanted to show and I really wanted to do, we're waiting any day now. We should have the adapter bolts for the MT-09 mirrors. I wanted to take the mirrors off the FCR, rebuff them out to where they're perfect, so that the day that that fitting comes in, I can play musical mirrors. Now, whether this weather is ever going to let up, your guess is as good as mine. Now I'm always happy when I can take parts off a bike, very easy to do it, refresh the finish, and I'll show this up close and personal. But again, this is the kind of thing you could do with any part on a bike, you could, if you could take it off, the seat, the tank, anything that you want to bring inside on a rainy day and buff it out if you don't have any other way of doing it. And these mirrors, we've already had them painted, but I want to get them really, really buffed out perfectly now. Now they're a couple of years old maybe three years old, I guess. And the paint has a few scratches and bug chips and stone chips. I want to make it so it's as good as I can get it. And I'll show that on this video. Now some people, of course, once they paint something and buff it out, it's done forever. But you know what? In my case, I like to maintain it. I like to keep it really as nice as I can make it. And that goes true with the motorcycles, the wheels especially. They, they do need constant maintenance. This is kind of a maintenance thing. To do to any old paint, I have a dedicated video of buffing out the 40 year old paint on the GS that seems to be very, very popular. But these mirrors, three year old paint, we can make them even better. Now, these are the mirrors I just did a mirror video. These are the mirrors that I like the best with the aerodynamic shape. They seem to have good quality gimbals. They're about 20 bucks a set. Maybe they're up more. I haven't bought them in three years. Everything is more now. And they have this nice recess and I've painted all the mirrors. I, I just like shiny mirrors. It's a personal taste thing. It's like you like vanilla ice cream or chocolate or blondes or, or whatever. I like shiny stuff. So step one is we'll mix up some soapy water. 2000 grit in Dasa and this is Rhino Wet, the red line. It's available off the internet and if you buy a sleeve of, uh, usually it's 50 sheets in a sleeve, or 25 it gets to be a lot cheaper than if you buy an individual piece of sandpaper. So the bottom line you're probably asking is why would we even bother doing this and let me show what happens in time. I don't know if I can get this on the macro lens. I guess I really can't. Anyway you get anything you paint plastic I've found as years go by a couple of years it it turns into like a little bit of an orange peel. Now, you can bring it right back to life just by sanding it with 2000 grit and rebuffing it with 8065. And you can even do it by hand. You don't even need a machine to do this. But if you just let it, it just gets, there, you can see it right now. You can see that orange peel in there. Well, because these are going on the MT-09, my, my goal is to make them as good as I possibly can. And again, we're waiting for that fitting because the MT-09 has a reverse thread, waiting for the adapter. And in... <laughs> When you, when you order the part, I guess I should always mention this, the next day you get the email, it'll be there in two months, and then three or four days later it comes. Well, sometime it doesn't come. It looks like, looks like this one really might be coming from China, unlike those windshields. So the first step with the soapy water, and it's just like buffing out new paint, except now when you have three-year-old paint, one of the advantages is it's a lot hotter and it sands a lot quicker. And doing a refresh, I call this a refresh on it. And I've seen uh, other videos for people that do like a Ferraris and Porsches, and they do this with uh, the whole car. And but you better have enough clear on now. High end cars I know have enough clear on them, and some of the motorcycles do, but not all. So you wouldn't want to do this every two weeks, but I think once every three years is pretty reasonable, especially if we're going to swap these out and put them on the MT-09 since everything on the MT-09 is still pretty new. I thought there'll be one more little thing that I should just make it a little bit nicer.
And again, my, my motive is always, always to always show one thing the, in real time. Now, no camera cut. So let me see if I can get to where I can show this. Maybe because we have fluorescent lighting in here. And you can see where I've done the sanding. And that whole part now has to be sanded to where it's flat like that before we can really buff it out. Now, this is the whole thing in a nutshell when you want to refresh paint. If you get it flat like that, once you have it flat, then getting rid of all this orange peel is really pretty easy. But you've got to get that. And the idea is, and it's really tricky. It's not as easy as you think it is. You want to get it flat and remove the least amount of paint possible. I don't want to go right back down to, to the plastic. I want to take that very thin skim coat and I want to do it with 2000 grit. And I know this will buff up with the 8065 and it'll be absolutely beautiful when I'm done. I don't even need a machine to do this. This is a small enough part I can do it all by hand. And that is that is the best way to refresh refresh any paint on anything. Now, you wish you could work and fast forward, you know. But anyway, it does take a few minutes to do this and it's really not difficult to do. It's really that old thing we all talk about, the labor of love. Now once that's done, even the even the uh, the parts up here, I've got the whole thing flat sanded, and from this point on, that'll make buffing it out relatively simple job. And it wouldn't matter if you're doing a side cover, a headlight cover, like I did that headlight Ducati headlight cover for Dale, any part, as long as there's enough clear on it, and you can just put that light sanding and avoid these high spots. If possible, because if you go through, eh, it's a problem. That's why I like to buff these parts by hand. A lot less chance I'll go through. And this is the product I like to use. A lot of polishes work great. This is just the devil I know. The stuff Dale uh, donated to the cause. The Meguiar's works real good. But this is a product I've dealt with for many years. It's kind of the devil I know. And it does, for hand buffing, it really works well. Just what we're doing today is what it's good for. So I always like to do one part, if I possibly can, in real time to show how long you can expect to take to do some of this. And again, the biggest thing to avoid is the mountaintops. And this, this is the kind of thing, if you get tempted to use a buffer on this, mm, just be really, really careful. In my case, I'm never in a rush when I do this kind of work. So I just want to do, I want to do one little spot here in real time to show how quick when you've got the older paint, this is, this is older paint, it's not soft, it sands out beautifully, and boy, when you do it right, it buffs up so quick, and it's so rewarding to see this now, because there'll be no little bug marks, no little specks of dirt, and all the little road grime is off it, it'll be like, just, just like a brand new part when I'm done with it here, and it will not take long at all. All right, so in real time here, and I didn't do any camera cuts to so make it tricky or anything. And no matter what you're buffing out, there's a, there's a real thing to it. it. The reward is instantaneous. It's like a video game. Yeah, and all of a sudden you're done and uh, five, ten minutes go by and you've got something to appreciate. Now that's pretty much ready to put back on the MT-09, and that is that is a very small upgrade, but something I'll notice, and I'll guarantee other people will notice it too. That really adds a nice touch. I just think about the flat mirrors that are coming off. Well, as everybody knows, I'm not crazy about flat black. Anyway, I'll do the other one off camera, and then we'll celebrate. But of course, the second part, as with everything, the second part always buffs up a little quicker, a little nicer, a little faster. Anyway, we are ready. The last step on this is to get a coat of colonite wax on it. And then we, we got to wait for those adapters. And thank you, Joe Padula, for introducing us to this. This is really good stuff. And what I like about this, it's a last step wax. In other words, you don't put this on a piece of sandpaper and hope that it shines. What you do with this is you put it on, and pretty much the way you would 
the old-fashioned days when you put carnauba wax on a car and you let it dry to a haze and then you wipe it off and when you're done with this this really puts the final I don't know protection I guess I've been using this on the bikes for since Joe gave it to me and it's really good stuff I really don't need a lot of this product that's for sure but this really is good stuff and Joe I really appreciate it because after you've done all this work and all this polishing it's a shame that if it doesn't last now you've got to let this dry to a haze and then buff it off with a perfectly clean microfiber which pretty much like old school car waxing in the old days wax on and wax off and then this will be ready to put back on and we've gained I mean, this is a giant step because this is something I would have to do the day that we get that little fitting and I want to have this this is one of the upgrades to the MT-09 that I'd like to have and there's a couple more but I'm not sure how many of these we're going to get done we have Turbo Steve's project we're in the middle of working on and it's almost time, I guess a week from now, two weeks from now, Karen's going to want to go shopping for plants and stuff. Now, the thing is, don't, don't rush this. Let it dry. Give it a few minutes to dry. And then when you do, buff it off with a brand new, brand new clean microfiber. These are polished and waxed. Oh, man. This is, this is the fruit of your labor for a day like this. Just to get this little step done and knowing that we're so close to having this MT-09 project we're not finished because the bike is never finished, but that I say it's ready for summer riding and we do have a couple more little things we want to try. But getting these mirrors, this was one of them. I, I was never crazy about the flat black mirrors on any bike and this one is no exception. And I was not aware right in the very beginning that that one is a reverse thread and you have to order that. We did a dedicated video on mirrors. I hope that gave somebody some, some food for thought anyway. Boy, that colonite wax is beautiful stuff. Boy, does that come off? And you can you just can see how quick that comes off. Wow. Unbelievable. How nice is that? Right at the end of a day like this, I like to just look at, I call it the fruit of your labor. Fruit of my labor here. When that goes back on the bike, that'll be one more little detail. And this MT-09 project is nothing but a lot of details. And they're all small details, too. That really did come out nice, and I am one step closer. Every day, I try, to, I try to estimate one step closer, and it seems to work for me. Anyway, this was a nice day to get this done, a nice relaxing couple hours. And the problem right now, this time of year, we have about two weeks more of working on the kid's house. We're delivering stuff this afternoon. <laughs> the weather's still terrible. But it's all going to come to fruition in about two weeks. In the meantime, we're getting little jobs done every day. So time, time is well spent. Now, when I first got the MT-09, and of course, everybody knows it was my birthday present. <laughs> so a pseudo birthday present. Anyway, the, the whole purpose was when I got the bike, I... I rode it for a couple of days and I was already dreaming about what color am I going to make the wheels, what windshield, what custom little features I'm going to make out of carbon fiber, and what am I going to do about this, the graphics. I wasn't crazy about the graphics. And when I look back and I see all of the things that, that have happened over this winter and over the course of maybe three or four months, I don't know, polishing up the exhaust and I, I the, getting rid of those bolts out of the scoops, painting the stripes on the windshield, just there's so many little details, the bar ends, the, every time I look at it, the, the blue parts on the carbon fender, and there isn't one of them that was really, really a, a big job to do, but it was a lot of, lot of little details, even those little covers, all of the little covers on the side, and even all of the time John and I worked together on this logo for the t-shirts, for my t-shirt collection and you can have one of these the the hot link is in and by the way i do, should say this on every video the hot link is in the description of the video so but the real thrust of everything we do in the shop is to have the bikes ready the, the riding season's coming up we're going to be riding in northern new jersey lower new york we're going to try to ride all seven of our registered bikes and we're going to have some two-stroke days I know Luciano's hot to get out on his H1, and he's got his new bike, the, the Korean bike, and 
just every single part of it. We, we miss seeing the guys up by Perry's, miss seeing our friends. The polishing, that was a good polishing video just a couple of days ago. Got some good input on that. The carbon fiber parts we made, sharing that information. The painting of the wheels, replacing parts, doing normal maintenance. And the biggest thing of everything, though, is the rides. Without the rides, I, I don't think it would be worth doing this. Not for me, anyway. It's all about you go out to the garage in the morning on a beautiful, beautiful day. The birds are chirping. The coffee tastes great. Karen says, uh, see you later, alligator. And you got a couple hours to go out there and go through the gears and impress yourself with how, what a great ride you are and, and have the Valentine radar detector go off and thumb nose the uh, law enforcement. But sometimes you don't get to do that. I enjoy shooting a video. I enjoy editing them. I want to thank everybody for watching them. And we do post something up every day. Hopefully we will see you tomorrow.